All right, welcome to section 1.2. This title is Random Samples. So our objective today is to understand, construct, and simulate random sampling, and also to state and describe different kinds of random sampling. So we're gonna look at different ideas about the main thing that we're gonna do is sample in this class. So sampling from a population, all right? So what is a sample? It is simply just a subset of a population, just part of a population. So maybe our class that we're going to have in, in dual credit statistics would be a small sample of your population in West Fargo High School. All right, simple random sample, that's just a, a, a nice friendly phrase to say that each member of our population has an equal chance of being selected. So that all that means is that as long as everybody has an opportunity to be selected, if we randomly draw a name out of a hat or, or randomly pick your name out of a class list, as long as each person is only in there one time or the same amount of times, that's what it means to be um, an equal chance. And each sample has a certain size n and is always the variable that we're going to use for sample size and it has to have an equal chance of being selected. Okay, so what kind of random sampling techniques can we use? There's a lot of different ways that I'm going to go through more of these actually when you guys are in class, but we can use our calculator. So you guys are going to need to have a calculator when we come to class. We can use a computer program like Microsoft Excel, and there's a lot of online things that will do random number generators for you. There's a random number table in your textbook in section A9 in the back, Appendix 9. If you go back there and there's a whole slew of numbers in groups of five and we're, I'm going to use an example to show you how to use this in just a second and then another way would be picking like a name out of a hat that is another way for you to do a simple random sample and like I said we're going to do a lot of in-class activities and I'll show you how to do this a little bit easier than via YouTube all right so what is not a simple random sampling technique when you just go out and ask somebody in a mall to participate in a survey that's not random Okay, you're just conveniently going and asking somebody, so that's not a a, a random way to do it because there might be a you, you're not you're limiting yourself to a certain part of the population. Asking for volunteers instantly says it's not a random sample. Okay, if you voluntarily go up and do something, okay, that's not a a, a nice general broad population that you're trying to get at. And then polling members of this class on career interest. Why is that not random? Because a lot of you chose to be in this class. It's elective. It's dual credit. You are in a certain part of the, uh, how should I put it, in a, in a broad spectrum basis. It's, it, you are not in a random sample. Okay, you're probably the, the higher level grade achieving students in your class. You're not getting the broad spectrum of your class. So there's a, those are a, a different ways that are not. Okay, so here's a simple random example. Let's say North Dakota State Powerball. You, oh, I'm going to preface this, this does not mean that you should go out and buy a Powerball ticket when you guys turn 18 years old. I'm just using this as an example and we'll discuss this in class too. I don't say that you should go gamble by any stretch of the imagination. But if you get a Powerball ticket, the numbers range from 1 to 59 and we're going to use a random number table just to select the Powerball drawings for the first five numbers. Okay? We are actually going to do this one in class. What I want you to do when you come to class is write down your five numbers write the five numbers you would pick if you were able to go out and buy a lottery ticket. Okay, that's all I want you to do and then we'll see if anybody wins the lottery when you come into class. And then I want you to think about if you ever, will you ever win if you had the numbers one, two, three, four, and five. Do you think that's possible or just stupid to take those five numbers? So I want you to just kind of think about those when we come to class. Okay, sampling techniques. Okay, I've already kind of talked about simulation. I'll show you that in a second. Sampling with replacement. And then these other four are on the next slides that we're going to do. Stratified, systematic, cluster, and convenience. You're going to need to know the difference between all of these. Some of them are more logical than others, and I will explain them in one moment. So you should write those down. You, by the way, you might need to pause because I'm going to move kind of quickly, and then you can write it on. Okay, simulation. So this is the same idea as random sampling. You simulate simulate something using, for instance, a random number table. Okay, so maybe you want to simulate flipping a coin without actually having a coin. So if you guys flip to page A9, okay, and what I'm going to do is start with the first numbers on the random number table. 
They are 92630. 9, and you will always start on the very left side of the number, or the row, okay? And what you do is you take each number. For instance, now I need to simulate flipping a coin. When I think of a coin, it's heads or tails, okay? So the easiest thing to do is in the beginning, just say, all right, if I have a heads, I'm going to say that if an odd number shows up, that's a heads, okay? And if it's a tails, I'm going to say that if an even number shows up, it's going to be tails. And what you do is you start with the very first number, so in this case a 9, and that's an odd number. Since that's an odd number, okay, that means the first time I got a heads. The next time I got a 2, which is an even. Then I got a tail. A 6, a tail. A 3, okay, odd, that's a head. A 0, that's an even number. It's like 10. Okay, that means it's an even, so you get a tail, and you can keep going in that order. Now, in this particular case, okay, we go numbers one at a time. If you go back to the Powerball thing, and we can go 1 to 59, you would actually use two numbers at a time, like, for instance, the number 92. And if that's too big, it will be thrown out, and then you move on to 63, and move on, and so on. And I will explain all of that to you a little more in depth in class as we simulate the Powerball game. Okay? And then do you think you will get the same exact outcome starting in a different spot on the table? No, I hope not. It's completely random, which means the number should change. All right? The other four, stratified sampling. All right? So stratified. You first break the populations into strata or groups, strands, whatever you want to think about, in which all the occupants share a characteristic. So, for instance, you may split the residents in California into the urban, i.e. L.A. area, suburban, all the outlying cities, and then rural residents, all right? And then randomly sample from each group, okay? So you might say, uh, ask 1,000 urban people, 800 suburban, and 300 rural folks, and ask them for their opinion on whether or not the amount of public art should be increased or something like that. That is the idea of stratified. You're breaking them into strands of similar interest, and then you're going to sample parts of each of the strands. And you're going to maybe get a, a clear idea of what's going on in an urban setting, a suburban setting, and a rural setting, because opinions, depending upon, will change where you live. Okay? So that is stratified. And uh, this one is tricky with the cluster, so you need to maybe make an asterisk as to why this one is into the strands, and then you randomly sample, okay? Systematic, exactly like it says. Members of the population are sequentially numbered, okay? And then you pick a random starting point and select every kth member of the sample. So to make this in layman's terms, if you go to NDSU and give each faculty member a number, you list them 1 to 1,000 or whatever, and select every 13th faculty member, that is systematic. It's like a machine. You line them up, and then you go 13th, then the 26th, and the 39th, and the 52nd, and so on down the line, and you can ask them to answer questions about whatever you want, maybe salary structure or whatever. That would be systematic. Okay. Cluster. This is the one that you guys usually get uh, mixed up with with the stratified one. Okay. Think of cluster as you first divide the population into clusters or sections. Okay. And they still should be similar to each other. So it's kind of like the strata where you put them into groups in a way. Okay. So maybe an example of this would be split high-rise male-only dormitories into floors. So maybe you're in a high-rise and you focus on a floor. Maybe the for instance, down here is the 2nd, 5th, and 14th. And what do you do with each floor? You will then select and sample, keyword in the sentence, all the members in the cluster. This would not work in the California setting because you're not going to go and, you know, survey every person in an urban area in California. You would... It would not waste your time doing that. Whereas in a dormitory, there's a, a finite number of people in there. It doesn't take that long to survey everybody on a floor that lives in a dorm. So that would be the you know advantage of a cluster over a stratified situation. You do break them into groups, but in a cluster, you you know survey everybody. Okay. 
The last one is convenience. It's exactly like it sounds. Members of the sample are chosen by being available and willing to participate. This is a severe risk of a bias. Okay, this is not highly recommended in any statistical study. Okay, customers at a cell phone store who will fill out a comment card. How many of you go into Verizon store or whatever phone company you have and are happy with how long you have to wait? Okay, usually filling out a comment card isn't going to go so well, so that you have a little bit of bias there. Students walking on campus will participate in a short survey. Okay, that's just a, a, a sheer bias situation that might happen because you're, you're not going to get a nice broad range of a, of a group of people. Okay, and we'll continue to talk about that. So the last ones, I just have five of them. I'm going to make this really quick. I want you to push pause. I'd like you to read the next three slides and put your best guess as to which type of sampling technique is used for each situation. And then all I'm going to do is read them and move the rectangle side. Push pause now. And college students are waiting in line for registration every eighth person. This survey, definitely systematic. You're doing every eighth person, very easy. Students waiting in line for the same registration are asked to volunteer to respond. This would be a convenience because you're asking them to generously do it. If you did it where every eighth person you asked, that would be systematic. So there's the difference, and it can be a little tricky. You gotta kind of got to think, you know, systematic or convenience difference, okay? In a large high school, students from every homeroom are randomly selected to participate in a survey. That is your stratified. You have been broken up into homerooms, into certain groups, and then and you randomly select people. That would be stratified. Okay. An accountant uses a random number generator to select 10 accounts for an audit. Definitely a simple random sampling. That'd be using your number table. You're just randomly selecting people to get an audit. And then the last one, by default, to determine students' opinions of a new registration method, a column randomly selects five majors, so only five majors are randomly selected. But then all the students, you're going to see that keyword, all the students are surveyed. That would be a cluster. So that would be the extent of our notes today. Here's the assignment that you're going to work on tomorrow in class. We will do these problems from your homework quickly as an act in class activity along with whoever is going to win the Powerball. Big money riding on it. And then we're going to work on those problems and have your group quiz at the end of the hour. We will see you guys.